Hi, welcome to Abzet Math. In this video, we're going to look at our last problem from our problem set of AMC 10 counting problems. And uh, let's see what we have. How many four digit positive integers have at least one digit that is a two or a three? So you may recognize this as a more difficult version of an earlier problem from this set. And it's a difficult problem because it appears as though it's difficult to count this set directly. Uh, we basically have a four digit number and in order to count this set directly, we'd have to keep track of how many twos we have and which locations they may be in, how many threes we have and which locations they might be in. And this seems like a very difficult counting problem. So let's try to see if we can approach this from a different direction and recognize that this set that we're trying to count is a subset of all four digit numbers. So we'll represent this set that we're trying to count as this shaded portion here to indicate all this stuff up there. And what we notice then is that this opposite set is a set of four digit numbers that contain no two and no three. And it appears that this might actually be a simpler set to count. And the reason why it's simpler is because we don't have to keep track now of how many twos there are, or how many threes there are, and what positions they're in, and we'll see how that plays out in a moment. So let's go ahead and try to try this approach. We're going to count up the number of four digit numbers and subtract this set in order to arrive at our shaded set. So let's count up our numbers from thousand to nine nine nine. And we know how to do that. It's simply nine 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 minus a thousand plus one because we're including the endpoints and that's equal to nine thousand numbers of uh, four digit length. And now let's try to count up the numbers that contain no three and no two. So there we again we have to be a little more careful. We'll consider each of the digit locations separately and let's try to see what choices we have for the first digit. We can choose from either nine eight seven six five four three two, one, zero. And because it's a leading digit, we don't want to choose zero. And again, we're choosing, we're trying to count the number of four digit integers, which don't have any two or three. So we don't want to count the two or the three. And we basically have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possible digits to choose from. Now in the next digit over the hundreds place digit, we essentially have the same choice of digits, but now we can include zero because it's not the leading digit and we have eight possible choices, and likewise for the tens and the units digit. Now we have to recognize at this point that our choices for these possible digits are independent choices, and they're not connected in any way. And so we can use the multiplication principle to compute the number of compound sets that form these digit types. And that's given by the simple product of the number of possibilities for this digit times the number of possibilities for this digit and so on. And so the total number is given by 7 times 8 times 8 times 8. And let's just do that over here. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 is, uh, okay, that's 5, 2 to the 9th, that's 512. And times 7 is 4, 8, 35. Great. So 3584. Subtract that from 9,000, which is the total set, and that gives us 6154 as the total number of elements in the shaded set, and that corresponds to choice E. Again, a pretty simple problem if you kind of see this set relationship, and it's pretty much an impossible problem if you try to count it directly. Anyway, hope that was clear, and we'll see you next video. Take care. Bye.